then we also have a much large scale conflict that is what you call a transboundary water conflict. Like interstate water conflict is a very major issue in India. Uh, every river is a contested terrain here and we have no uh, idea how to deal with that. Uh, you might know that in India water is a state subject. Yes. Okay. Uh, except where there are transboundary water disputes. So constitutionally then the centre can intervene and if two states or contending states oppose the centre, then they can appoint a tribunal. Now tribunals are appointed and supposing that uh, they have been able to resolve the uh, conflicts and things. So recently there was a constitutional review. So one section of the opinion is that water should be shifted from the state to the concurrent list so that centre can mm -hmm. intervene much more decisively. Yes. But some of us don't believe that by really shifting from state to set, uh, concurrent list, the issues are going to be resolved. You need much more that what we discussed earlier, much more uh, scale or bottom up. Uh, yeah, bottom up institutions that need to be created. Yeah. In the absence of that, by merely shifting to this, it's not going to change. Plus, states are not going to give their powers, give up their powers, because they know that what's an important thing and they would not allow this to happen. So that is another uh, issue. Can I ask yeah. why, um, why, why was it um, that the Indian Supreme Court was made, made, why, why was water made to be more of a state subject than, a, than a concurrent, or on the concurrent list? What, uh, initially because water is much more a dispersed resource. Yes. Therefore, agriculture is also a state subject. Uh -huh. Because these are supposed to be dealt with much more locally instead of this. Now, defense is something which, for example, let's say defense, transport, communication, these are much more larger type of things where the center can or finance, other type of things. But issues which can be like education to some extent. I think forest was also, forest and environment also earlier was a state and I think it's become a concurrent list now. I'm not very sure but I think so. Forest definitely is a concurrent of the central government subject or concurrent that place. Uh, but Water is a much more of a local or a decentralized type of resources and type of, that's the very nature and people use it that way and things. Similarly for agriculture. So that's why I think primarily why water was seen as a uh, state subject, except in those transboundary contexts. Yeah. In fact, there is also provision to create river boards. But that is also nobody has accepted. No, there is not a single river board which is existing. Except, for example, Tugabhadra, there is a Tugabhadra board which only manages the Tugabhadra dam. Actually, it's not the entire river which is managed this. So we have such a type of vacuum which is taking place in this. So that is one of the reasons why. And we also have no clear understanding of allocation. So what principle do you, between different states, share water? Mm -hmm. Has the upper riparian state all the right to use all the water? And very often what happens, agriculture gets developed first in the, down, uh, in the lower riparian states. Because that is the, what you call the... Uh, flat area, like and, uh, alluvial, uh, uh, alluvial plains, and definitely what happens. In this. So there's only a water use which is in place there, like property pattern and the thing. Later, up, upstream states start developing their water sources, and so there's a conflict. And so on what basis or principally are going to share water between states is also not clearly understood. Similarly, so between the different countries, we have water issues, like whether it's on Indus, Ganges, and other type of issues. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we say that uh, India has been to some extent resolved its conflicts with the neighbors. You know, Pakistan and you know, India went to Pakistan, I think, war thrice or something so far. But still, the water treaty, Indus water treaty, is still standing. Mm -hmm. They meet regularly, they take a review. Now there's some more problems going on between the two countries from the Indus treaty itself uh, and things. Or even in the, between Bangladesh and India, also on the question of the Ganges and the Farakka barrage, for example, there's a problem. Uh, but we say that we have been able to resolve the transnational issues much more amicably than our own interstate issues, because that is still a very conflicting area in that country. So that is one set of, uh, I think there are five or six case studies we have 